Alright, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Pokemon Sun and Moon Wi-Fi battle. This time we're having an RU tier match against my boy Sharpedo43 from my Discord server. If you guys would like to battle me, hit me up on Twitter, Facebook, or Discord. Links as always are in the description below. And uh, we're having an RU tier match, like I said, so we're, we're pretty much done with PU. I know I've been playing the hell out of PU, and uh, I've been enjoying it, but... It's time to uh, jump in headfirst into a brand new tier. I don't think I've ever played the uh, Sun and Moon RU tier, um, so I'm pretty new to the metagame. So if I make any like newbie plays, guys, just understand that I'm new to this, and uh, we're going to learn together. So this is a team that I scooped up from the Smogon forums from King Why Not, I believe. It looked like an interesting team. It has a couple mons that I love to use. It also has a mon that I don't think I've ever used in uh, Zoroark, so this this team looked pretty interesting. So I, I decided to scoop it up. Usually whenever whenever I'm new to like an, a tier, um, I like to grab teams from other people and then try to learn like the metagame, then start team building for myself. So um, yeah, I just look, I just love the look of this team. But anyway, look at my team. We've got the Scyther, Nita Queen, the Zoroark, Gardevoir, which I love, love Gardevoir. Uh, Vaporeon, another mon that I love, and then the Mega Obama Snow. So looking at Sharpedo 43's team, he's got the Heliolisk, Cofagragus, Honchkrow, which is a major threat in this tier. Um, he also has the Roserade, Blastoise, and the Meloetta, which is always pretty cool to see. So this was a fun battle, guys. I hope you'll enjoy. So the battle begins, my opponent is going to lead off with his Heliolisk as I'm going to lead off with my Scyther. So obviously this is a bad situation for me because I don't want to take an electric type attack from this thing. So I decided my safest option was to swap out into my Obama Snow because had he gone for the Hyper Voice, I have the Soundproof ability. And uh, had he gone for Surf Predicting Nidoqueen, I can eat that. And if he goes for an electric type attack, I can eat those as well. My opponent is going to go for the Volt Switch here, which is still a good play for him because he does maintain the Switch Initiative. He's going to bring out Powerade, which is the Roserade. I love that nickname, by the way. And uh, here, this is just a classic case of me overthinking things. Um, my first thought was the Technician boosted HP Fire, which is obvious as hell. And then my second thought was maybe he would predict me to predict that and swap out and then go for the Sleep Powder. So I didn't want anything on my team to, be, to uh, get put to sleep. So unfortunately for me, my, my Mega Obama Snow here is going to have to take an L for the team. And uh, yeah, that really sucks. So... I should have predicted that honestly when he brought it out, but it's whatever. Hindsight's 2020. I'm gonna bring out uh, Rule 34 here, which is my Gardevoir, sexy as fuck, and uh, I'm just gonna go for the uh, the Psy Shock here. And uh, my opponent is going to obviously swap out, not wanting to take the Psy Shock on his Roserade. And uh, thankfully for me, my opponent did not go out into the Honchkrow. Instead, he decides to go out into Staying Alive. The uh, the Kafagrigus here, so had he gone out into the Honchkrow, I'm actually Scarfed, so that definitely would have been a problem for me, because I definitely would have had to swap out and uh, given him a free Swords Dance boost, so thankfully that didn't happen, and I'm able to get some nice chip damage off between the Psyshock and the Hail damage on this uh, Kafagrigus, but he does have the leftovers, so here I'm going to swap out, I don't want to take a super effective uh, Shadow Ball or Hex or whatever the hell this thing wants to go for, so I'm actually going to swap out into my Nidoqueen because it's honestly the only thing on my team that I don't mind getting will o -Wisp. But instead my opponent's actually going to go for the Toxic Spites, which really kind of sucks honestly because <laughs> because I brought Nidoqueen on the same turn, uh, I'm not able to absorb the Toxic Spike. So had I brought in Nidoqueen like literally a turn later, I would have been able to absorb those. So that really sucks. But uh, on this following turn here, my opponent's going to make kind of a questionable play going for the Protect as I'm just going to take this opportunity to set up my rocks, so I basically get up like free stealth rocks, so I'll definitely take that. And uh, here, I'm just going to basically stay in here, try to whittle away at this Kafagrigus, because like I said before, this thing, <laughs> it lives up to its name, staying alive. This thing sticks around for fucking ever, just because it's so damn bulky. So here, I'm going to go for the Ice Beam. Uh, I didn't want him to predict the Earth Power and like swap out into the Honchkrow. So I was basically predicting Honchkrow. My opponent's going to make a great play by staying in for one and for two going for the knockoff. So that's going to get rid of my Life Orb, which is going to make Nidoqueen not hit nearly as hard because Sheer Force Nidoqueen <laughs> hits like a damn truck, especially when I'm modest max special attack. So here, I kind of figured he would just stay in. So I go for an Earth Power here as my opponent's going to go for Hex. And because I don't have any status element, uh, it's not going to do too much. And 
obviously Nido Queen is a pretty damn bulky mon, so I'm not going to take much from that. And here I just decide Ice Beam is good enough to kill him, plus if he does uh, bring out the Honchkrow predicting yet another Earth Power, it'll kill that as well. So he's just going to let his Kafagrigus die, and uh, here he's going to bring out his Meloetta, and uh, it's always cool to see Meloetta. <laughs> like, you never really you never really see him as, as much, but uh, here I'm going to swap out. Because obviously if this is Psychic Meloetta, I don't want to take a Psychic on my Nidoqueen. I'm actually just going to bring out my Scyther here as he's going to go for the Relic Song. So that's going to make him change forms into his Pirouette form, which is instead of a normal Psychic type, it's a normal Fighting type. So this is actually perfect for me. Scyther eats these things for breakfast and uh, he's going to have to swap here. And uh, kind of figured he'd swap, so I went for the U-turn here just to maintain Switch Initiative. Basically doing what my opponent did to me a couple turns back. <laughs> And uh, he brings out his Blastoise. U-Turn actually does a decent amount of damage, not gonna lie. That's nice chip damage uh, between that and the Stealth Rock. So here, I'm just gonna bring a Nidoqueen, honestly, to sack it off, but also to get rid of his Stealth Rock, not Stealth Rock, sorry, his uh, Toxic Spikes, because being a Poison type, I, I absorbed that. So here, my opponent is going to go for the Protect. I believe he was probably scouting out to see if I had the Thunder Wave, or not Thunder Wave, sorry, <laughs> god damn it. Thunderbolt, Jesus Christ. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so obviously I don't have Thunderbolt on the set. Uh, here, I believe I just go for the Toxic just to, just because Blastoise is a really bulky mon, plus it's kind of a problem on his team uh, for my team to deal with. So basically whittling away at this Blastoise is uh, definitely going to make things a lot easier. So here, I'm just going to sack off my Nidoqueen, which was what basically what I was trying to do this whole time. <laughs> and he's finally going to kill me off with his Scald. He actually gets a crit there, which obviously didn't matter at this point in the battle. So I was already like under half. Um, so here he's going to take some uh, poison damage. And I believe here, what do I bring out? Oh, okay. So I bring out my uh, my fake Skyla. This is actually my Zoroark. And uh, here I'm just going to go for the Swords Dance. I was honestly <laughs> crossing my fingers praying that he didn't go for the Scald Burn. And uh, he actually makes a really weird play. Uh, he goes for the Toxic, um, which actually helps me out a lot, <laughs> because now I don't have to worry about the possibility of getting burned and having my attack cut in half, because Zoroark, or this Zoroark, is a physical Zoroark, so being Toxic definitely helped me out here, plus I'm at plus two now, and uh, I'm ready to dig down his, his uh, whole team now. So here, I'm just going to go for the knockoff, and uh, at plus two, plus stab, plus life orb, that is going to be a dead turtle, so <laughs> down goes Blastoise, which is great for me because now that's one of his possible hazard get rid of hers. <laughs> his other one is Honchkrow, which could possibly have defog which i don't think anybody runs defog Honchkrow, but it's it's still a possibility so anyway he's gonna bring out his uh helio fuck i, I always fuck up this thing's name helio lisk <laughs> and i kind of figured that the majority of these things carry four attacks so i kind of figured a sucker punch would be a very safe bet there so that's exactly what i'm gonna go for and uh, my Zoroark <laughs> came in here and uh, is doing the finest of work here, killing two two Mons off the crack of the bat. And uh, here my opponent is going to bring in this damn Honchkrow. And holy shit, is this thing a threat. Um, I should have gone for the Sucker Punch here. I don't know why I didn't. Uh, I just went for the knockoff as my opponent is going to go for Sucker Punch and kill me off. So now he's going to get a Moxie Boost, which makes this thing incredibly scary. <laughs> Honchkrow plays no fucking games, let me tell you, man, this thing is scary as shit. Um, so here, I'm going to bring out my uh, Vaporeon, we get it, you vape. <laughs> I love this nickname, man. Um, so here, I kind of felt like I would be bulky enough to at least take one attack and kill this thing off with Scald, but unfortunately for me, this thing is going to fucking annihilate my Vaporeon here. Poor Vaporeon, man, he just got dicked. <laughs> and uh, he's going to take a fuck ton of recoil, holy shit. Like, literally all of the damage that this Honchkrow has taken is from passive damage, like Stealth Rocks and Recoil damage. That's just fucking insane. But uh, here, I'm actually going to bring out the real Scyther for <laughs> for once, and uh, I'm just going to go for the Aerial Ace. I actually outspeed, which I thought was kind of odd. I Honestly, I thought his Honchkrow had me licked, um, but somehow I outspeed. I don't have full investment in speed on the Scyther. It's actually more of a bulky set, but somehow I outspeed, and uh, I'm actually able to kill off that thing. And here... My opponent is going to bring out the Meloetta here, and uh, he actually outspeeds me, which honestly helps me out a lot, because now I was planning on swapping out into Gardevoir. I'm just going to U-turn, and uh, had he gotten damage off on Gardevoir, it would have made me a little bit weaker. I think I still would have had the battle in the bag at this point, 
but uh, it would have made things more difficult. So he's going to hit me with the Relic Song, and then I'm going to get the hell out of here with U-Turn. And then at this point in the battle, because I'm Choice Scarf Gardevoir, and because his last two mons are weak to the Psy Shock, I pretty much have this one in the bag, so I'm, I'm able to outspeed the rest of his mons. And uh, that is game, so good game, Sharpedo43. This was a really fun match. I hope you guys all enjoy these... Uh, these RU tier battles. I'm like I said, I'm new to RU, so we're just gonna kind of learn as we go. <laughs> and uh, here is last mon is this Rose Raid, but yeah. Anyway, this was a good game, uh, Sharpedo forty three. This is our second battle I think we've had ever. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely enjoy battling him. So we'll definitely battle in the future. And uh, I'll also drop a link to this man's uh, YouTube channel. He he is an up and coming PokeTuber as well, and uh, he makes awesome content. You guys should definitely check him out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it guys. I love you. Peace out. All right, I'm probably just gonna throw this at the end of the video, but my good buddy Cameron gave me a code for Shiny Savali. It's the GameStop Savali. As far as I know, it's US only and uh, I don't need it and he doesn't need it. I asked him if it was okay if I gave it away and he said, sure. So it is first come first serve US only. And uh, I guess whoever gets it, gets it and uh, enjoy your Savali.